Howdy. So, talking about linear equations and focusing in on uh, rates of change. So, the rate of change of a function is um, how much the y axis variable is changing um, relative to how, how quickly the x axis variable is changing. So, it's kind of a ratio. Um, you can think of it as the change in y um, compared to the change in x or the difference in the y's over the difference in the x's. Um, and so there's different kinds of, of rates of change that we can we can classify rates of change into. So there's a positive rate of change. That means the y axis variable is increasing as the x um, axis increases. So you know it'd be something like this. The y is here are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and the x's are getting bigger and bigger and bigger at the same time. Um, a negative rate of change would be the y axis variable is decreasing as the x um, axis variable increases. So as we go from left to right, the x axis is increasing. Say that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's getting bigger going this way, but the y's are getting smaller as we go that way. So let's say that's, I don't know, what is that, 7, uh, 6, 5, 4. So it's getting smaller. Um, and then there's, um, we can talk about zero rate of change, where you'd see something like this, where, you know, the y's, the, you know, the y's just aren't changing at all as x changes, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So here's, here would be the, the graph of a function where y is just 8 no matter what. So um, y isn't changing at all, but x is increasing as you go from left to right. So some examples of positive, negative, and zero rates of change would be, I don't know, say like uh, we do a graph of um, miles per hour. So I could do miles over here um, on my y-axis and hours here. Um, if my rate of change is 200 miles per hour, um, I'd say that's a positive rate of change because the y's are getting bigger as the x's are getting bigger. And actually, it would be a pretty dramatic positive rate of change. You know, These guys would be increasing 200 for every time that this guy increases 1. Okay. Another example might be um, you know, negative 10 gallons per 3 minutes, just to kind of pick something random. Say like I'm measuring the um, amount of milk in a giant milk jug and so I'm, I'm measuring gallons on the y. Uh, let's, m let's make it kind of yellow. It's kind of spoiled milk. Sorry, that's kind of gross. Um, uh, and then minutes on the x-axis. So as we go, as we increase on the x-axis, so as, you know, one minute, two minute, three minutes, the amount of milk in that container is actually decreasing by 10 each time. So what that would look like is something like, you know, roughly like that. I mean, this is not exact, and I didn't really label my axes, so um, don't quote me on this, but it looks something like this, where this y-axis variable is decreasing as we go, um, as the x-axis variable is increasing. So as we go from left to right, um, these guys are, are decreasing. So, and eventually that, that jug would run out, you'd hit, hit zero, and Etc. So um, another example is um, zero rate of change. Um, say like I wanted to do a function of um, the the diff uh, the distance between two buildings as a function of time. So uh, I'll leave minutes there. That's an m, and then um, let's say let's call this axis distance d. So I'm measuring the distance between two buildings. You know maybe downtown here and as a function of time and um, let's say the distance is 35 feet so say like this value is 35 I'm just gonna write 35 so you believe me 35 um, if the dis distance between those buildings is always 35 feet no matter if you're talking about a minute from now or um, 300 minutes from now or 3 billion minutes from now then that's a, there's no rate of change there. The distance is always 35. And that, so the y's stay the same as the uh, x's increase.